organic food is a niche and it's a niche market and people who um, so, you know who um, what's the word people who subscribe to organic really are people who understand that you know it's nature you're growing with nature so you can't cheat nature nature has its quirks it's not perfect everybody you're welcome to Just for Women Africa. My name is Olaleka Amosa, the founder of Just for Women Africa. And today on this show we're going to be talking farming. Yes, farming. Farming, <laughs> health and wellness. Yes, and uh, today we happen to have the uh, CEO of Garden Two Plates with us in the name of um, Na Enti. That's correct. Right, and today she's on the show. She's going to talk to us about her, um, her business, uh, her practice and uh, farming, how she got started and uh, things you should know about farming in Ghana. And of course before we start the show do not forget to hit the um, like button, hit the subscribe, tell a friend who knows a friend about Just From in Africa. And today too I'm gonna to give now a shout out to people who have come on the show. The first one will be to Overly G H. You can find her on Instagram on overly underscore G H. She makes beautiful cakes uh, and uh, place your orders with her. Uh, you're welcome to the show, man. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> yeah. All right. So before we start the show, um, can you just tell our viewers a little bit about yourself? Okay. So my name is my full name is Nainile Enti. Um, I'm married. I have two sons. I'm a biochemist by training, um, and after many years of a corporate career in the UK. I moved to Ghana because I wanted my sons to experience growing up at home. Um, and since I moved to Ghana, I started a business in farming. Um, so I started as an agribusiness entrepreneur. And it's grown. It's grown more than that. Um, we, we are looking at becoming a health and wellness company as well, with the farming being a subsidiary of it. Um, I started farming because I wanted to eat well and a lot of times I couldn't find the things I wanted to eat or at the price I wanted to pay for it. Um, so farming really was a labor of love for myself and it's taken a life of its own and grown. That's me in a nutshell. That's you in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so can you tell us about Garden to Plates? Garden to Plates started in 2013. Um, like I said, I moved to Ghana in 2012 and I grew up with my mother gardening at the back of the house and growing her own vegetables. So she was very particular about growing her own lettuce because she didn't want to eat anything grown by the side of the gutter. Okay. Um, you know, she always said, why do we grow vegetables there? So I grew up like that. So when I moved to Ghana, I decided I was, I lived in a big compound and I was putting grass at the back of, you know, laying the lawn. And I got to the back and I thought, this is crazy. Why am I spending all using all this land to grow grass that doesn't really benefit me in any way so i decided to grow vegetables for myself and it just started as a small enterprise for myself i had no you know there was nothing about there was no plan to have a business with it um, we grew just lettuce and cabbage and we grew more than we could eat so we were giving it away and everybody kept on telling us how good it was and that i should consider it as a business it took about a year to convince me and my first thing I did was to grow some vegetables, take it to my children's school and give away and then ask the question, if I did this as a business, would you buy it? And I had got unanimous we were. And so in 2014, we started as a business. It was a small enterprise and it's an enterprise that's grown by word of mouth. And today we have quite a lot, a few customers and we do deliveries only. COVID shifted the business plan from having an outlet where people could pick it up or come to the house and pick it up. And we turned it into a delivery only business. And I must say, that has been really successful. I didn't expect it to be. Um, I was always worried turning it into a delivery only business, but that's what it's become. Okay. Yeah. All right. So how long have you been doing this for? So I've been doing this since 2014. So this 2014. is, yeah, this is my eighth year okay. of doing it, um, of farming, but we've moved on from farming. So we got to this place where customers would say things like, oh, I buy the vegetables, but it stays in my fridge and I throw it away. So we decided to start helping our customers by giving them ready to eat salads, um, taking it that step further where we are washing it and cutting it up for them so that all they have to do is empty it and eat it. Then we started making salad dressings. Um, 
you know, uh, and then we started having workshops teaching people how to do some of these things for themselves um, okay. so that they're not always dependent, making their own salad dresses. And these really were from a health and, you know, a, a health and wellness perspective um, because I'm really keen to explore that food, you know, we all hear that food is medicine. Mm -hmm. But I wonder how many of us really understand how true that statement is. I was recently in a, on a flight and in the magazine, there was a magazine in there and there was something around food and that I, you know, and I read this caption by a French philosopher that kind of sums it so beautifully because none of us really think about it. And what it said was this, it said, to eat is a necessity, okay. but to eat intelligently is an art. Okay. And that is so true because if you're eating intelligently, it means you're planning. You're thinking about what you're eating. You're thinking about the different things you should be eating. Mm -hmm. um, and so it takes a lot of intelligence to eat well. It's easy to just eat. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that's where Garden to Plates is going in terms of the health and wellness aspect. Educating and helping people do it. And then we're looking at eating local. Okay. We import a lot of vegetables into Ghana, but there's so many things in Ghana that are great for us, that are local, that are cheap, you know. One thing that comes to mind is millet. You know, we all get hung up on quinoa, but millet is fantastic <laughs> as a grain. Um, and there's so many leaves and legumes, um, and yet we're buying kidney beans in a can. When mm. Ghana has so many beans um, that we could, you know, tap into, the other legumes that we could tap into. So that's a whole educational piece around what we tend to do, what, what the future holds for Garden to Plants. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. So, um, but how can, can you tell us exactly how you got started? Did you get a uh, piece of land somewhere, mm -hmm. start, mm -hmm. start in your backyard? How do you get your seeds? Of course, your produce are organic. Yes, they? they are. Yeah. So how did you actually get started? I mean, with things of irrigation, how did you plant around that and stuff like okay. that? Okay. So I am lucky that I live in, and I live, I, so I started at home. I started in my backyard and I'm lucky enough that I have enough space. I, it, I live in a big, in a, you know, I have a lot of yard around me. So it's a, it's a decent sized farm by all standards coming, you know, for something that's done at home. Okay. Um, so it started at home. At the moment, I've partnered with other farmers. I have a couple of part, um, farming partners who grow certain things for me. So I'm very strict about what I, I, what I grow and what others grow for me. Um, so it started with me bringing my seeds in. Um, but of course, there's a limit to how many seeds, how much seeds you can, you can bring in legally into any country. Okay. So I actually became certified as a licensed um, seed importer. So I import my seeds. I import the seeds that I want to grow. Um, when I started, I didn't have drip irrigation and sometimes I could buy the seeds in Ghana as well. So I, I do a mixture. If it's available in Ghana, I buy it. But sometimes because of logistics, you don't get a flow where you're always getting the seeds that you need. So that's when I import. Um, I have drip irrigation. I've put an irrigation system in. So I have drip irrigation. That's on a timer. At the moment, I have a very sophisticated one that allows me to program it on my phone. So regardless of where I am in the world, I can actually look at, monitor how much water is going on, my, um, on the farm and I can play around with programs of the timing that I want it to be irrigated. So a lot of investment over the years has gone into it. Um, you know, and um, it's organic. So I am certified organic. I'm part of a system that iPhone came to Ghana to start. They chose four countries. Ghana was one of them to start mm -hmm. having this thing called a participatory guarantee system. And in effect, what it is, is that it gives you assurance that when I say I'm organic, my things are organic because I get inspected yearly and it's a yearly certificate. It gets renewed every year. Mm -hmm. And their inspection looks at things like the inputs that you're putting into your farm. So how organic are your um, fertilizers? Um, are you spraying? And when you have um, infestation, what kind of um, insect, uh, you know, insecticides are you using? Because of course there are organic insecticides that you can use. So okay. it's not all chemical insecticides. So they look at that. They look at um, the environment you're in because organic farming is simply, it's more than just the fact that you are not spraying. It's the environment. Is it ecologically friendly? Are there, you know, when they look in the soil, can they see little worms, you know, walk in the soil? Because that tells them 
because if, when you spray you kill all the other insects and all the other things that are in your farm so if they came into a farm to inspect and they saw no butterflies or any insects then they know that something's not quite right they look at things like how you treat your employee uh, your employees do your employees have a contract what kind of planting program do you have um, you know um, and what training are you giving so it's a bigger picture than just them inspecting how you grow your your vegetables so mm -hmm. I am I'm fully certified and what we're really clear about when we send out a broadcast to our, um, our customers to tell them what we have available is to distinguish between what we grow which is certified by the PGS system and what our, our, um, our partners do um, which who haven't subjected them to um, certification but who I am absolutely sure off because I inspect some of these farms are growing it by great standards eventually what I plan to do is to move only selling PGS um, partnering with only PGS farmers growing the kind of things I want to sell so that that's where we are heading that's where it is. Okay. so talking about PGS um, is it something just for Ghana or is it a global thing and it said it's renewable annually so they come to the farms every year yeah you have an inspection every year so your certificate has a finite date Okay. Um, so my current certificate is, uh, was November 21st, tw November 20, 2021 mm -hmm. and expires in October um, 2022. Okay. So what then happens is that by the beginning of October, I should have booked an inspection, okay. right? So I would book an inspection, tell them, you know, I'm ready for my inspection. They'll come in October and that means that it will be seamless by November 2022. I'll have my next, um, my next, um, certificate and they're very strict you know you don't get past if that things that um, they, they see that they need you to work on then they hold the certification till you've done those things and you've proved to them that you've done those things then your certificate is issued um, so it is for a final year and you get it's renewable every year okay yeah. so the I mean when so the final produce from the farm when you send it, does it have a PGS sticker on it? Yes, it will have a PGS sticker on it. Um, the things that I have been inspected will have a PGS sticker on it. And every farm that is inspected has a unique code. So you'll have your unique code and then it will tell the, client, the customer the dates that you're certified for. So they will know if you're out of your certification. Um, and you only get the, you know, it's the, the certification company, the certification organization, not a company, organization are the only people who issue the stickers. Okay. Um, and have the logo that is printed from them. So okay. when you are inspected, then you you ask them for your stickers. You, okay. you pay for it. So you order how much you, how many stickers you want, and mm -hmm. that's when it's printed for you. So I couldn't go to any printer and just create it. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's quite interesting. Yeah. yeah. All right. So watching just for in Africa. My name is Olalek Amosa, and today we're talking farming. We have um, Guardian to play with us. Um, the CEO, the name of Na Entry. Right, and she's been talking to us about um, how she got started um, with her farming and um, the various challenges she has. All right, before, but before we go on, I'm going to give out another shout out to a client of ours, um, OT Brands, a young girl under 25. She does beautiful work, she needs nice packaging. Uh, you can always contact her. We'll leave her details below. Okay, now. Um, all right. Of course, it's been starting since 2014. It looks looks all nice from the outside and all. But can you tell us the real challenges you're going through? Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. I think one of the first challenges I realized was how you cannot depend on rainwater. Um, for instance, you know. So when I started, um, it was rain and it was us using a hose, and how inefficient those things are. So you know, sorting things like how you're watering was really important. Getting good quality um, inputs is also a challenge. Um, and then getting it consistently. But I think the biggest challenge for me has been human capital. Okay. Getting people who buy into the vision of what you're doing okay. and who understand what you're trying to do and are happy to do, do it the way you want it to be done and not cut corners and I think that's been one of the biggest challenges for me and then marketing you know um, getting a market where people actually trust what you're doing okay. and I think that's one of the reasons why I opened myself up to certification because even though I traded for a while on my own um, and I had been doing well certification was my way of saying um, actually you can trust me Okay. and I'm putting my money where my mouth is because you pay to be a member of PGS right it's not it's not free you pay for the set you pay to be a member 
for them to come and certify you and for them to come and do the inspection for okay. you. So, I mean, for our clients out there who are watching, can you just give us a list of things that you're actually growing from? Okay, so the leafy things we grow is, it's eclectic. <laughs> so we grow rocket or arugula as the Americans will call it. Um, we grow kale, we grow three different types of kale. Um, we grow baby, um, spinach, we tend to, um, it's the local spinach and we tend to harvest it as baby spinach. Um, we grow Swiss chard, we grow ruby chard, yellow chard, um, which are leaf beets. Um, we grow perpetual spinach, um, something called Mizuna. Um, we grow a lot of herbs, so we have parsley. We also grow amaranth, which is what I alluded to earlier on, called alefu, and another leaf, roselle. Roselle is the is the hibiscus plant, and it's the it's the calyx of that that is used to make um, bisap. Okay. Um, and it's the flower calyx that goes red and it's used to make bisa. But the leaves are edible. It has the most amazing lemony flavor. And again, and it's called Surrey in the north and it's predominantly eaten in the northern of Ghana. So if you went into mm -hmm. any, um, you know, you probably get it in Nima, but it comes dried a lot of times with the Surrey, but you can find them fresh. But you wouldn't find it anywhere else. And what, that's one of the things we are trying to do as also to advocate and showing people all these amazing things we have in Ghana. So we grow that as well. Um, and then we do a lot of herbs. So we we have sage, we have oregano, we have bay leaf, um, we grow different types of basil, we grow different types of mint, we have rosemary, we have thyme, we have fennel, and the list goes on and on and on. I, I, as you can see, I'm a love of cook, I'm a, uh, you know, I love cooking, and I'm a, I'm a foodie. So <laughs> these things started, like I said, as a labor of love for myself and taking a life of it. So Organic food is a niche, and it's a niche market, and people who um, so, you know, who, um, what's the word? People who subscribe to organic really are people who understand that, you know, it's nature. You're growing with nature, so you can't cheat nature. Nature has its quirks, it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so to speak, the, and, and that is why you cannot feed a country with organic. So it's not that I'm saying you can't eat anything else, but whatever you eat has to be done responsibly, okay. right? So, so that, that's where we are going. Mm -hmm. All right, so about to round up the show, I think I've got two or three more questions for you. You're a woman, you're doing business in Africa, you're doing great things. I'm sure a lot of people will be wondering how you go to balance, balance things. I'm sure you should have your work, you have a family, you have your husband, you also have to have your you time, me time. <laughs> totally. <laughs> how are you able to balance all that as a woman? Um, oh boy, it's hard. Um, I won't, I won't, I won't lie about it. But it's also for me. I, it, I set boundaries really early. So when I started, I would, people could call me at any time, and I'd be in the garden, and I'd be harvesting, and all of that. But what became apparent was that it was difficult to be doing this all the time and having it interrupt into family time. So I'm strict about the times that I work. I, you know, I, I have boundaries around the time that I work. I have boundaries around the days that, that I work. I mean, luckily for me, my children, you know, when I started, my children were much younger. Okay. Um, but obviously, over time, my children have grown, you know, okay. eight years, uh, eight years now, you know, so my oldest child was eight when I started. Okay. My youngest was five. Okay. Um, no, my youngest was, yeah, um, eight and six. And so um, they needed me more. Mm -hmm. I needed to be hands on mother more than I do need to be now. So as my children have grown, I've taken on more things. I'm doing mm -hmm. more things um, around it. Um, but it's just, for me, it's just having a plan and having boundaries around what time I'm working. Two phones, mm -hmm. I have a business phone and I have my personal phone. Mm -hmm. So my business phone is strictly for business hours mm -hmm. and my personal phone is my personal phone. So one of the things, for instance, is that I don't work at the weekend. Weekend for my family is I, You know, I have set my business and I have deliberately set my business up that way. Okay. Um, so I won't pick up a call. I might answer a, a WhatsApp message now and then and I, might, I will call the person back. But if I'm in the middle of something for mm -hmm. the family, I don't necessarily, you know, pick my phone up my business phone up so I have strict rules around things like that um, and I plan my day but I'm naturally someone who likes planning anyway mm -hmm. so I plan my day you know I wake up in the morning I already know what I'm cooking for my kids what I you know what time my kids are coming to school I put meetings in between the time my kids are into my, you know my children are in school hence you know do a okay. 10 o'clock interview because my children are in school and I know by two o'clock three o'clock 
I should be at home because my children are coming back from. And I don't, you know, when they were younger, that was more important than it is now. Now they, you know, at 16, they can come home. I don't need to be there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So it's things like that. It's working it around my family. And I know if you're in a corporate space, you don't necessarily have that flexibility mm -hmm. but I'm in a business where it's my own business and I have that flexibility and so I capitalize on it uh, and I've come from a corporate background so I do know how difficult it is to do that but I'm in a space where I can do that so that's mm -hmm. what I do. Okay guys I see watching just for a moment I've got about to round up and uh, I'll throw a shout out to Native Concept you can find her on Instagram on Native Concept 01 and uh, she makes really nice um, African um, items from the north you can contact her i'll be leaving her contacts below okay now um so as we're about to round up i have just two more questions for you two more questions for you. a lot of women out there say it's difficult they feel it's a man's world that go to climb up the ladder and stuff like that i mean take advantage of them sexually i mean you go to a board of directors in like one woman one woman out of like 10. Absolutely. what advice can you give to women out there who feel that it's a man's world and it's just difficult getting up my first advice is don't let it be a limitation factor don't let it be a limiting factor it is what it is and we are always striving for it to be better um, but don't let that be your limiting factor or your limiting belief mm -hmm. right um, you know you keep knocking on those doors and you keep knocking and give it your best right so excellence always speaks for itself yeah. right so just continue doing what you're doing and excelling at it and be your own advocate um, you know talking about what you're doing a lot of times we are very good at things and uh, I learned this when I was in the corporate world um, we tend to think going to work and being fantastic at our job mm -hmm. is what gets us noticed yeah. and what gets us promoted and I learned the hard way um, that actually it's not it's being visible Okay. right you need to be visible if you're doing something exceptional you need to find a way of articulating it letting the people who matter because if you think about it in a lot of organizations jobs don't get advertised right sure. before you know something there's a promotion and somebody has got that promotion before mm. you know it you know or there's a job available and it's not even um, um, advertised internally because more often than not senior people directors know who they want that job for okay. and it's because of networking in the business because somebody has mentioned someone's name because they've met you and they know what you do so you have to be your own advocate you know stop hiding the shadows and thinking your good work speaks for you yes your excellence ultimately is what will guarantee you the job but somebody has to know about you first okay. right they have to know you are there um, so don't let the fact that we're in a month will be a limiting belief for you um, because the only person you're limiting is yourself uh, because you know that that it's a man's world has been there for a long time and yet there are women breaking boundaries all the time. I think this was my last, very last question. I'm sure a lot of people are watching you on YouTube. They want to uh, make orders from Garden Two Plates. Mm -hmm. They want to get in touch with you. Can you give out your contact details so that if anybody wants to make orders, um, salads or whatever, they know who to contact? So you can order on 503 0503-8838. That's 0503-883838. We're online as well, so you can go to gardentoplates.com. Um, we are on Instagram at gardentoplates6919. That's at gardentoplates6919. And you can also order by email, orders at gardentoplates.com. Thank oh. you. All right, man, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, you've been watching Just for Women in Africa. Today we had um, uh, and two with us on the phone, CEO of Garden Two Plates. I'm sure you see her contact details below. You can place your orders through the numbers and from the website. All right, now, thank you for coming. Thank you so much, Daniel, for having me. You're welcome. Um, thank you. All right. Okay, guys, to the next show with Nye and I. It is. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Mm -hmm.